Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel's allowed. I mean, he's out. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Bye bye Good morning. You look like hell. Did you have another nightmare last night? Yes. Because having nightmares is what I do, apparently. Seventh damn night in a row. I told you, it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw with your karma. Unfortunately, I don't think my readers would go for a horror novel about fluffy bunny rabbits. So voodoo it is. You mean your reader? She lives in Wisconsin, doesn't she? Bite me. Hey, what goes on in your bed stays in your bed as far as I'm concerned. I have messages for you when you want them. Today's newspaper is on the counter. Times dated June 18, 1993. The Aquarius horoscope says, Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. <laughs> right. Just a few self-help books. That one on top was a joke gift from Mosley. I forget where that came from, but seems like a nice place to visit. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a bit scruffy. I always had a thing for St. George. The one who slew a dragon. Yeah, it's probably bigger than this little guy, though. That's from Graham. She likes to think it means someone's watching over me. I'm not so sure about that, but I don't have a heart to get rid of it. The Blake Backlash series. My literary claim to fame, such as it is. Not so lucky for the rabbit, was it? Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. Local interest piece on the store. It didn't garner the sympathy sales I was hoping for. Someone left those here after Mardi Gras. My spare motorcycle gloves. Someone left those here after Mardi Gras. I practically own stock in these guys. You can't take two steps down Bourbon Street without ending up with a strand of beads. Those keychains were for a promo I tried once, before I realized it was hopeless. If you try to look down my shirt one more time, I'm leaving. Just trying to refresh my memory. I know what you're trying to refresh, and it isn't your memory. Get down. Drachen, Kriken, and Meinen Schlaf, die Seele wollen sie, Leben dig, zum Fraß. Eurigen Atems, gespaltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kinda creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. 
I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling this guy was one sick puppy. Hey, that's interesting. Snakes can sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters. They've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. leaves through a German English dictionary. Reiso means a journey. I wonder if I'll ever use this stuff. Gabriel opens a cash register to examine the take. Or in the case of St. George's books, the mistake. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch-up. I might be able to use this black shirt. Gabriel, shut that refrigerator, please. Oh, I can smell it from here. Whim. An abundance of white t-shirts. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. It's no use. I can't sleep. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. Can't. Writer's block. If I threw those pages away, they weren't worth reading. Got a minute, Greg? What's up? What do you know about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the papers, same as you. Did you find any good voodoo resources for me? The best in the city are supposedly the Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in the French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. If you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. Do you have messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talkative, isn't he? Especially with you. What did he want? He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey, and that he left some photos for you at the station, at the front desk. It's about time. Let me guess. This has to do with the voodoo murders, right? Some kind of inside police information? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new book? Maybe. A writer has a certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character's a female orthodontist. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... Uh, that's enough. Thanks. Do you have messages for me? You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. 
If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great. We had a nice little chat about you. Grace. Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. And she sent over that box on the table for you. Do you have messages for me? Dana called and Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Tossum. Okie dokie. Well, that's all the messages for now. Tell me about yourself, Grace. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know, okay? How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books. And it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. Oh, I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it. I thought spending a few months here would clear my head. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. The books on the table have been chosen for their special appeal. Recent fiction by the biggies. In other words, nothing written by Gabriel. Cute gargoyle, eh? Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy daddy was. The chandelier is original. Gabriel finds it charming. All right, all right. He can't afford to replace it. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Uh-huh. The Dixieland drugstore is closed until tomorrow morning. Posted on the door of the museum is a sign saying closed. Their hours list that they will open again tomorrow. The sign says the overlook's closed for repairs until June 21st. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What do you know about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What can you tell me about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. What can you tell me about Norlin? I'll tell you. I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in Norlin's would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. What can you tell me about Norlands? Best food in the world. You can get it right here in Norlands. Mufaletta sandwiches. Mmm, mmm. Beignets, good Cajun coffee. Yep, 
a man can die happy in this city. It's practically guaranteed. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah, I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. Where's the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. You don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the desk sergeant, Frick. Why? Frick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. Tell me about yourself. You see that front door? Yeah. Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah. Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Oh, I think not. That's what I thought. Hey, nice precinct. Think so, huh? <laughs> That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He had hair then. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot, a graphic close-up of a victim. Interesting design for a trash can. Must have been on sale at Cops R Us. A portrait of the Narlands Chief of Police, a fine upstanding citizen. In other words, Nothing like Gabriel. Good day, officer. Yeah, you too. Keep moving. Could I ask you a few questions? Not now, buddy. I'm busy. I should have noticed that. Thanks. Yeah, right. You white face geek! You wanna eat my fist? Cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister, you want some of this? Why, you little... Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Interesting. 
Hey, you, get away from that bike. Sorry. Hey, mostly. Huh? Knight, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Uh-huh. Well, I guess I can let you see it. For the book. But don't tell anyone, huh? Definitely another voodoo murder. Same M.O. and no freaking clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. Oh, that's disgusting. Isn't this a rather public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're freaking ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports and nothing. Now, who the hell is that? Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. Uh, we got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly a Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Nah, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. Well, let's get the meat wagon moving then. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck and the water moccasins, though. If you want to talk, I'll be at the station tomorrow. Thanks. There's a pattern to the lines in the sand, but only one small area is clearly defined. Hmm, let me try to copy this down. That's a lot of blood. The banks of Lake Pontchartrain are rich with clay deposits. I'll take some of this clay with me. Something small and iridescent is barely visible in the sand. It looks like a scale of some sort. The scale is too delicate to pick up by hand. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small, iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. Police tape marks off the crime scene. A 
At least the cherub is an aesthetic way of asking for donations. Gabriel might need the goodwill, but he can't afford to make a donation right now. Curtain confessionals are a subtle, old-fashioned presence on the left of the nave. Someone is in that confessional. Gabriel will have to wait. Flags of the world are displayed from the upper story. A promotion of universal harmony, no doubt. Rows of pews line each side of Deneve's aisle. The chancel of St. Louis Cathedral consists of a raised dais, an altar, two pedestals, and a choir area. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. Really? I forgot you were gone. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm, the name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you can get an address. Mm-hmm, the murders, right. I'll see what I can find out. Well, oh, it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And try not to dream. Good morning. Don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. Mm -hmm. So have some. There's a fresh pot on the table. Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh, it always does that. Never mind. Ha uh ha. -huh. Did you dream about the fire and the hanged guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Malia Giddy? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Molly Getty is incredibly gorgeous. I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is? 
Hey, far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West Ingram. That's the Garden District. Estate City. That's all I wanted to know. And yes, my dear, Maliaghetti is the most dangerous looking diversion I have ever seen. Ouch. Ugh, men. Dated June 19, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crime is faked. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square called La Plaza Dons under French rule. It was used for executions, firing squads, hangings, even impalements and breaking on the wheel. Yikes! Of course, these days, it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians, and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instincts. I feel a dark star rising, all right. Rawr. I'll be back later. Have fun. Bonjour, Monsieur Walker. Bienvenue, Madame Casano. Comme ça va? How you be feeling today? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Walker. I'm certain someone's buried asleep, not bad. Somewhere near my steps. I haven't slept a wink, not in weeks. Now, don't that beat off. I'll need some easy night candles then, huh? Do you think that would help? I do hope you're right. I said three rosaries this morning for Our Lady's intervention. Rosary good, sure enough, but you burn them candles too, boy, you gonna whip any no-sleep gree-gree, I tell you for sure. Very well, Mr. Walker. Put them on my account and send them around to my house. Oh, and there's another thing. I didn't catch her at it, but I know. Mrs. Lefebvre put stomachache powder in my tea at the last meeting of the Creole Grand Dame. I've been in misery. Now you put nine pinheads up in the little box. <laughs> Add a pinch of graveyard dust. Put it up under her front post there. That'll turn the trick back on Miss Lefebvre, and she be the one with the belly, eh? <laughs> I got the pins of dust right here if you want them. If the Blessed Virgin will grant me her protection, I'll be safe from these practitioners of evil. We, oui, madame, though, uh, don't hate to be proactive none either now, does it? Naturellement, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Mais non, madame. It's nothing. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur Walker. The sign says, Special St. John's Eve Lagnia. Free bottle of lover come back to me oil, or master gambling oil with every purchase over $50. Lagnia. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. The proprietor doesn't look especially friendly. His business probably doesn't depend on walk-ins. Garlic, cloves, and other dried goods and spices are collected in the bowls. I know where to come if I ever have a vampire problem. Herbal oils for love, luck, power, and success. 
The Dixieland drugstore is crammed from top to bottom with strange merchandise, some or all of which seem to be related to the practice of voodoo. Root bags, curio boxes, and magic candles. Sold as curios only. We cannot guarantee results. The poster advertises a voodoo play from last fall. It's a mannequin wearing a crocodile mask. The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. Hi there. Is this your store? This is a Dixieland drug store. Now I own it. Me. Name's Walker. Willie Walker. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. Do you think I'm stupid? This is a voodoo shop. Look at all this stuff. These is novelties, curiosities. If people want to think they magic, <laughs> it's not my concern, you know? What do you know about the voodoo murders? Capoisonco. What did you say? Nothing. Them killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. What do you think of New Orleans? I live here all my life, me. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night of the year in voodoo. What goes on exactly? I, I couldn't say. Do you know anything about animal masks? The only one left is Willie Jr. over there, the old crocodile. He's sort of a mascot now, him. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Uh, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons, boas, so I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What did you mean when you said Cabri Sanco? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. That customer of yours, the little old lady. Customer? The woman I saw in here, Madame Casino, you called her. I don't talk about my customers to men who come in off the street. Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. How did you get into this kind of business? Now, why should I discuss my business with you, man? So, this is a voodoo store, huh? Voodoo? No, man. This is a curio shop. The things you see here from local folklore, none of it real, I tell you for sure. What about all these magic oils and powders you're selling? Aren't they a part of voodoo? Read the label, man. We make no claims. Sold as curio only. It mean what it say, no? These are novelties, not voodoo. About Willie Jr., would you be willing to let him go? Hmm, maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred? You gotta be kidding. Me and Willie Jr. are very close, no? I couldn't part with him for less. Welcome, my friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I will be happy to assist. Great. My name is Knight, and I'll probably take you up on that. A street drummer has settled outside the museum. The voodoo shrine is filled with items that both fascinate Gabriel and also make his skin crawl. A flyer advertising Magenta Moonbeam, a local voodooian. Her parlor is on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. Will that look sacrilegious? A street drummer has settled outside the museum. This coffin is so small. A waste of some perfectly good wine, if you ask me. It wouldn't be much of a voodoo museum without a voodoo doll. Flickering candles lend an appropriately spooky atmosphere to the museum. 
reminds me of a book critic for the New York Times. An authentic looking pole marks the center of the room. Authentic what? Gabriel isn't sure. The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as offerings of fruits to the voodoo deities. The back wall displays various... An African statue laden with decorations. Now, why does that remind me of Grace? That must be Marie Laveau. Could I ask you a few questions? That is why I am here. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo. Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city. Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight. And will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade. But African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies, where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importings of slaves from that region. So how did voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. What happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight. If only in the form of a communal barn. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Link Pontchartrain. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons, and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or grigri. That kind of practice is actually called hoodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and there are many in the religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I personally am more interested in the history of voodoo. 
Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. What exactly is hoodoo? Hoodoo refers to magic folk traditions of the South. Hoodoo is a bastard of voodoo. Many of the Gri Gri are similar. But hoodoo does not have the religious aspects of voodoo. Tell me about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any run-in this week? No, but the cemetery is open to the general public as well. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The killings in the newspaper. I know they have nothing to do with true voodoo in New Orleans. What do you think of New Orleans? It is the only city in the United States, as far as I am concerned. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It is one of the important ceremonial nights in voodoo. Do you know what Capri saint means? I fear my French is not all it should be, Mr. Knight. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah, you have perhaps noticed the museum snake, Mr. Knight? They are beautiful creatures. Do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. Do you know anything about animal masks? I used to have some antique African totem masks, but they were on the point of disintegration. So I removed them. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes, if you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life. And I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us just say I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No, the museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to knowledge? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Just tell me anything. I am a vegetarian. Really? I can't imagine living without meat. That must be the hunter in you, Mr. Knight. Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then let us discuss something else. So how is the museum business? Those who truly seek to understand are few, Mr. Knight. But even one can be an audience. Sounds about like my shop. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. The snake is too far away. The python is quite dangerous. I would stay back if I were you. Thanks for the advice. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Come back again. Looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. I want to come. 
copy of these strange marks. Food, trinkets, and more unsettling things have been left at Marie Laveau's tomb as offerings from believers. The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Geni. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. Two enormous vases flank the front of the Geni tomb. Most of the plaster has fallen away over the years to reveal walls of red brick. I don't need to go visit the family tomb today. No thanks. Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. The East folks ain't in no hurry. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa, brought here by slaves. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Isn't it just awful? Them finding old bodies with the voodoo things around them? I don't think there's any real voodoo going on. Somebody trying to cover their tracks is all. What can you tell me about Narlins? Seem like everyone wants to visit Narlins at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery tours. I see tourists in here every day of the year. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them are poisonous, of course. I don't mind snakes myself. Lots of folks are afraid of them. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? Well, St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of Voodoo. Sometimes we get weird goings on in the cemetery on that night. More often on a few nights before, people taking grave dirt, bones, and who know what. That's pretty disgusting. Yep. Don't know what they do in them, but it can be pretty. Do you have any idea what Capri San Call means? Nope. Can't say that I do. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans, a powerful voodoo yen, and a powerful sorcerer. Believers still come to her tomb, you know. They write secret marks on the walls, leave offerings. Then they're the tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from that voodoo museum, he's here at least once a day. But Marie Laveau's tomb isn't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. You said there were other marked tombs? Yep. I've seen bull hearts left on tombs in a nest of vulture feathers, pleats of peas and congree, animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. And this is one of the great family crypts, mind you. Ah, how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. Do you know anything about animal masks? I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis Number 1. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, of course. A big part of my job, too, is looking out for the grievers. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for them. Sometimes they so grief bound, they don't know what they do. Tell me about yourself. That's about all there is to say. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery, number one. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins will float right out of their grave. Ha! Them dead will go floating right down into the quarter. Of course, if it were Mardi Gras, nobody would even notice. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War. Back further, too. 
take a look around. You see. You been working here a long time? Longer than you've been alive, son. I may have to be here longer than you'll be alive, for that matter. <laughs> kind of a quiet job you've got, isn't it? Most of the time, yeah. They act up some at the full moon, though. You must enjoy the company of dead folks. Unlike the living, they ain't never given me no reason to dislike them none. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Do you know what Capri Sankal means? No. Sounds foreign or something. What do you know about Marie Laveau? Marie who? Is she the one that hangs out on Conti and Nash? Uh, no. Never mind. Do you know anything about animal masks? I see plenty of masks during Mardi Gras. Not many animals, though. Of course, there's plenty of animals underneath. Come on in. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. What can you tell me about voodoo? There's voodoo that goes on in this city. Sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all fake. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know. I asked some experts. It's intimidation tactics. That's all. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Lots. Can you be more specific? Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scenes. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be. But we'd have to have a suspect in custody first. And the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged, trodden over, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's maddening. Like they know we'll never find them. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the Voodoo Murders case. The first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. is the same in each murder. Lake Pontchartrain was the seventh. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints, a few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur. Describe the crime scenes. Well, there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. Around where the body was killed, we find marks and flour and blood. There are traces of wax from candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles, so the lab reports. Also blood and feathers of chickens, and goat's blood. And plenty of the victim's own, of course. What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision. Literally scared to death. The knife wounds are consistent with a long, narrow, wavy-edged knife. Probably a ritualistic dagger. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard a disturbance. It's damned weird. Like they just don't want people to see. And so nobody sees nothing. Know anything about the victims? The victims are all out-of-towners. We still don't know why. 
Oh, nothing. Never mind. Sure, no problem. Okay, anything else? Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Is she that red-headed chick that works at Freddy's? Um, no. Then I don't know her. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? You mean like those Halloween masks they sometimes use in robberies? I don't think so. More like real animals. Never ran across anything like that. What can you tell me about Norlands? You and me grew up here together. You tell me. It's a pretty nice place, even seeing the stuff I see, you know. The Carter's getting a bit too wild, though. Getting hard to control. Not quite what it was when you and me used to hang here, but... Hell, I've never known anything else. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is that I don't like them. Does the phrase Capri Sanco mean anything to you? Hell no! Is that French? My mother spoke it, but I always had a hard enough time just speaking English. True enough. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? That's coming up, isn't it? We get some occasional weirdness in the quarter, but nothing much. We used to have a lot of strange things happen, though, or so I hear. Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay, what do you want to know? How do you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In Narlins, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but I don't see why I can't be the chief of police of Narlins someday. I already know the mayor, and my track record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Got any hobbies? Yeah, making your life miserable. I'm serious. Don't you shoot or chew or something like that? No, I'm a freaking ballet dancer. <laughs> yeah, I was number one at the Louisiana State Fair Marksman Contest. I play trumpet, too. You know. Put your lips together and blow. How's your home life? Oh, real funny night. Why don't you just bring in some freaking salt? You know Annie left me. My home life is shit. Right. Sorry about that. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play monkey in the middle? <laughs> Man, we used to piss off our senior year teacher. What was her name? Oh, Miss McKelly. You'd act like you were gonna toss her an eraser or something. And then you'd throw it to me over her head. And we used to do it at your grands, too. Like with the remote when she wanted to watch her soaps. Yep. And it was a great way to pick up women in the library. <laughs> ah, those were the days. Just tell me anything at all. You know, my doctor told me I got a little family of ulcers starting. I wish this case would end so I could get some rest for a change. Oh, nothing. Never mind. Sure, no problem. Okay, anything else? How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? All right, I'll go now. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. A microwave? If Gabriel knows Mosley, it's used exclusively for frozen corn dogs. Mosley's desk has more growing on it than his head. Police department memos and other didactic blurbs. Here, drink it. Thanks. Okay, anything else? 
you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those marks around them. We've got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six panels? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the file. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It's going. I can't seem to make any progress, though. Sluggish damn case. It's weird. So, how's it hanging, bud? Lousy. I hate crime scenes. People are sick fucks, you know that night? I'm starting to get that impression. Trying for a real estate job with that coat? No. Are you trying out for a janitorial job with that hair? I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. Excuse me, officer? Yes? Could you get me some coffee? Are you speaking to me? Why, yes. Wow, déjà leave it to Beaver. I'm the police photographer, sir. You might be able to find someone around here dumb enough to get coffee for you, but it won't be me. Oh, thanks anyway. I can give you precise instructions for the handling of hot liquids if you need them. N no thanks. So, what's it like being a policewoman? The glamour never ceases. You know, that uniform looks great on you. Uh-huh. Is that a compliment, or are you asking to borrow my dress? It's a compliment. Well, you just never know around here. Thanks, but I'm married. Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The Voodoo Murders file. Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if you said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want, but don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. Gabriel opens and reads the police file. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. Hey, mostly. Night. I had a feeling you'd show up. Whew, it's hot in here. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got any more ideas for photos for the book? A cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. I'll call the police photographer. Uh, Franks, come in here a minute, would you? And bring your camera. I hate to put my coat on. It's so damn hot in here. But a picture's a picture. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. Make it a good one, eh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, Chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast.
just want to check this machine here. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would ya? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you get them developed. Uh, the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. Anything else, Knight? How about one of me and Officer Franks? Gee, I don't know. Franks? Uh, um... Just kidding, Franks. You want to get me fired for sexual harassment night? Well... Yeah, ha ha. Now is there anything else, or can I let this lady go back to her desk? Nope. That's about it. Great. Thanks, Franks. Hey, I made a rhyme. You're astonishing, mostly. Don't call me that in front of the lady, wise guy. Thank God I can take this thing off again. Damn, it's hot. Okay, anything else? How about getting me some coffee? What am I, your slave? Hey, I'm working my butt off here. Yeah, yeah, fine. I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. I thought I saw something crawling on it. Just drink this. Thanks, tons. I mean it. Okay, anything else? Potted roses marked the entrance to the house. Gabriel didn't come here to mess with the plants. The garden district is famous for its elaborate old plantation homes and mansions. This particular mansion is impeccably groomed. The huge trees bear beards of Spanish moss. You? My name is Detective Mosley. I'm here on police business. Really? How interesting. Oh, wait here. I'll inform Miss Getty. Miss Getty will see you. Right this way. Ms. Getty will be down shortly. Thank you.
What can I do for you, detective? Harvard classics. Homer, Virgil. Maybe Malia wouldn't be impressed by a signed copy of one of Gabriel's novels. Genuine lion skin. I can imagine doing things on that road. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. Modern art? More or less. It's a Picasso. Beautiful women. They must be relatives. They are. The only thing Gabriel's likely to burn here is his bridges. Roses and gardenias give the air a sweet taint. The side table probably costs more than Gabriel's shop. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Miss Kitty? I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? Why would you want to know about that, Detective? It's rather silly, isn't it? There's nothing silly about the voodoo murders. But that voodoo is faked. That's what I've read in the papers. That's what the papers say, all right. But you're not convinced. No, frankly, I'm not. The police department isn't known for its uh, imagination. Oh? Well, I can see that your imagination is considerable. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The murders? Only what I read in the papers. And what do you read in the papers? I'm sure you know much more about it than I, detective. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm no expert. I don't fear them like most people do. Tell me about your life in New Orleans. The Getty family came to New Orleans in 1800. We worked very hard to get where we are. On the other hand, we've done a lot for this community. I can believe that. You're doing a lot for me right now. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I believe it's some sort of local holiday, but I don't know much about it. What do you know about Marie Laveau? I've heard of her, of course, but that's about it. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Cal means? No, I don't. What does it mean, Detective? That's confidential information, ma'am. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? I don't know what you mean. Tell me about yourself. I suppose I don't really have a choice. What do you want to know, Detective? What kind of things interest you? I don't have a lot of free time, but I do appreciate the arts. Opera, symphony, ballet, fine art. If you look around, you'll see that we collect African art, for example. Yes, it's very beautiful. It is, Detective. It means a great deal to me. Do you have a career? A career? Being the head of the Getty family is a 24-hour-a-day job. We have many holdings and many responsibilities, financial and otherwise. The management of our business affairs and properties leaves me with time for little else. Poor little rich girl? Believe it or not, detective, wealth does have its price. Tell me about your family. The Gettys? We're a very private family. How many people are there in your family? Well, my mother just passed away. Oh, I am sorry. So am I. She was a magnificent woman. We were very close. I was an only child. And your father? I never knew him. It's hard to believe that any man would leave a woman like you. Or like your mother must have been. He did not leave, detective. But that's really none of your concern. I'm sorry. Go on. There are, of course, other Gettys in the city. I have a large extended family. I see. Do you have a husband, boyfriend? I'm very independent, Detective. The women in my family have always preferred it that way. So you've never been married? No, and I never will be. What about children? Yes, that is likely. Someday. I'd like to hear just about anything. I have a business degree from Vanderbilt. 
I wanted to study psychology, but my family's interests came first. Oh, why not something like law then? Surely that would have been an asset to the family. Law? Please, I do have some morals, detective. I'd like to hear just about anything. For the record, I'm 28, detective. I wouldn't know where to begin. As you wish, detective. Can you tell me anything about what happened out at the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake. And I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. It's so deep and rich. Man, if I could bottle that, I'd make a fortune. Thank you, detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant, Miss Giddy. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. This is quite a place. Thank you. It's been in the family a long time. I can't help noticing that you're in incredible shape, Miss Giddy. Your legs are so strong. Do you work out at one of the clubs by the lake? Well, Detective, I do enjoy physical activity. Oh, me too. Actually, I was referring to swimming and modern dance. I can't say that I do much exercising at the lake, though. Ah, well, it was worth asking. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Miss Giddy. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but you don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book, and I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear I've never done anything like this before. Mr. Knight, you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Molly, wait. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit. Last time I looked. Give me my badge, right now. Oh, is that why you're so excited? If you knew what I needed it for. I'm sure it was to impress a woman. You could have asked. Do you know how embarrassing it is to admit your badge was stolen? I had a photo with the chief, and he wanted me wearing it. I should lock you up, Knight. I suppose you could. Seems to me, though, there was that time you borrowed my bike without mentioning it, right from in front of my shop. Yeah, don't remind me. Just don't do it again. Well, I'll be seeing you. Have a good one.
A sign on the front door of Magenta's home reads, Attuning with the Spirit Realm, back on June 22nd. Hey, Greg, here I am. Oh boy, party time. Got a minute, Greg? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? I need you to look up a Madame Casano. Madame Casano? Is she related to the murders the same way your friend Molly Aghetti was? Grace, Casano's at least 70. As if that makes a difference to you. Okay, I'll see what I can find. Anything else? I can't think of anything. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Never heard of it. Must be a local custom. New Orleanians love to party. Do you know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean real snakes, you know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint co means? Hmm, no. Sounds French, though. Do you know anything about animal masks? I'd rather not hear about your sex life, Knight. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Wasn't she a big voodoo queen before the Civil War? That's right. Well, you've just heard everything I know about her. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Uh-huh. That jazz band is pretty good. Of course, most jazz bands in New Orleans are. The band isn't paying any attention to Gabriel. Nice flowers. Not that a real man would notice something like that. A lone drummer beats out the haunting rhythm on a large African drum. Hey there, nice beat. I dig it. The drummer does not respond. Oh, hey! I'll oh, come back here. Hey! Oh, unbelievable. Rotten luck. A bronze statue of Andrew Jackson marks the center of Jackson Square. Hey, bro. Nice horse. Those drawing tools are amazing. Yeah, they're great for laying lines, angles, circles, you know, anything geometric. It's pretty meticulous, but I prefer it to freehand. Can you draw anything with those tools? They're great for ordered, complex forms and patterns, but they won't help me do Monet. <laughs> How's it going? Life sucks. I just lost two days worth of work. What are you working on now? Just starting another drawing of the cathedral. A Cajun band, inventive as always with their instruments, is having a good old time on the lawn. Funny how catchy that toe tapping can be. A small boy is tap dancing enthusiastically for a doobie dog vendor. The vendor ignores him. Gabriel can't reach the drawing from where he is.
You dance pretty well for a kid. Give me some money, then. I don't have any. Then don't block the view, mister. Do you do requests? Got any money? Nope. Something to eat? Uh, no. There you have it. No. Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Got any money? Nope. There you have it. No. Can't think of anything at the moment. Okay, then. A doobie dog vendor has set up business in the square. He has his nose buried in a paperback novel. Gabriel notices that it is not one of his. Big surprise. Could I get a doobie dog, please? Not now. I'm busy. An unambitious person in the 90s. Amazing. Hello, are you selling doobie dogs or not? The vendor ignores Gabriel entirely. I have this gift certificate. I'm busy. It's good for $20 at St. George's Books. Finest bookstall in New Orleans. Really? I'll have to check it out sometime. You could take this gift certificate with you. If you'll give me a doobie dog. A doobie dog for a $20 gift certificate? Sure, here you go. You wouldn't like a doobie dog by any chance. Would I? Thanks, mister. You got any special requests? Let me know. You mentioned something about special requests. Yeah, you got one? Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Can I? Just watch me. Good. There's something in there I can't quite reach. Can you reach that piece of paper? Sure thing. Here you go. Thanks, kid. Yup. See ya. Stupid wind. Now I have to start all over. This belongs to you, doesn't it? My drawing. How'd you get it? Oh, it was a bit of a squeeze, but I hate to see you lose your work. I lost my only copy of a manuscript once. Well, you saved my butt. Let me know if I can ever do the same for you, hey? Nice drawing of the cathedral. Hey, thanks. It's really precise. Well, I'm an architectural student, actually. It's good practice. Do you mind if I watch you? Be my guest. Is there any way you can reconstruct the whole pattern from these partials? Hmm. The pattern is probably circular, and there's some repetition in the elements. Okie dokie. Well, there's... oh, I think there's an area missing. If you could get me any more of these, I'll see what I can do. I have another one of those patterns. Really? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, this is great. I think there's enough overlap now. I'll give it my best shot. I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. Great. I appreciate it. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day.